Uh-oh. Guys, there's been a spill. Bringing spill kit. Stop and evaluate. EHS has a spill response flowchart. The way the chart works is if you can answer the questions to get to the bottom of the page with a green box, then you may respond to the spill yourself. However, if you answer any of the questions and it takes you to the yellow box, you stop what you're doing, secure your work, and call EHS to respond to your spill. First thing you want to do after having a biological spill is check your gloves. Chances are you probably got some contaminant on your gloves. If that's the case, remove your gloves using an appropriate method and put them in your infectious waste. Don fresh gloves before addressing the spill. If you're working in a biological laboratory, you're going to have fresh disinfectant on hand. That's an essential part of your spill kit. You also need some kind of absorbent material, a mechanical means of picking up any kind of broken glass, and potentially a biological solidifier such as biosolid, which can help solidify a large spill such as the one that I made. After notifying other personnel of the spill in the laboratory, you'll need to start addressing your spill. It may be necessary for you to evacuate the space for 10 minutes or so to allow any aerosolized material to settle down. The first step is to cover your spill in an absorbent material. You'll see that I'm starting way out from the large area of the spill because the droplets travel out from the spill rate and form a radius around the primary spill. If there's large pieces of glass I can reach without entering the spill area, you can remove those with your tongs and put them in a biological waste container. Make sure that if you're putting, you're handling broken glass, that it goes into a rigid container and not just a bio bag. After you've adequately covered your spill, you want to surround your spill in fresh disinfectant. Make sure that you do not spray disinfect it on your spill. You want to start at the perimeter, soaking your paper towels, and continue until you've saturated the entire area with disinfectant. After you've saturated your area with disinfectant, you want to remove your gloves and allow that disinfectant to sit for the required time as recommended by the manufacturer. Now that my spill has set for the recommended amount of contact time, I'm going to continue addressing it. There still may be some pieces of glass, so I'm going to go ahead and use the tongs to help collect the materials. This waste can actually go in a regular trash can because it's been adequately disinfected. Um, if you choose, you can go ahead and dispose of it as biological waste if you did not use bleach. If you did use bleach in your decontamination process, we don't want those items to enter into the autoclave to be processed because it can corrode the inside of the unit. If you spilt your material near a vertical surface such as I did, you want to make sure to decontaminate those areas. Make sure that you add adequate contact time for the disinfectant to do its work. After you've addressed your spill, it's a good practice to go ahead and do a thorough mopping of the floor because there may have been drops that you didn't see. Make sure that after you're done cleaning your spill that you change out your gloves so you have fresh gloves before you restart your work. Submit a safety concern and near miss report. Go to the EHS website, click on Emergency and Reporting, report a safety concern, 
and complete the form. You can fill it out with a location, date, time, your designation, and the concern type. So in this instance, if it was reporting for a spill, you would mark near miss, and then any other of these conditions that apply. Describe your concern, and you can always submit scans anonymously, but your identity will always be protected. So feel free to submit your name.